What's up, YouTubes? Welcome back to my channel, Richard on Data. My name is Richard, and this is the channel where we talk about data. So if you've spent a lot of time in the business analytics, the statistics, or the data science worlds before, you've probably heard the terms descriptive analytics, predictive analytics, and prescriptive analytics floating around before. Now, these terms are generally thought of together in a pipeline, and I don't think that pipeline is going anywhere in the near future. Having said that, there are a lot of misconceptions out there about what these things are and aren't, so I wanted to talk a little bit about them today as well as provide some examples of them. As always, I humbly request that you smash the like button. If you haven't hit the subscribe button in the past, hit it now, and then hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. All right, let's start with descriptive analytics. So broadly speaking, these describe what has happened in the past. And generally when people use the term exploratory data analysis, these are the kind of analytics that they're referring to. Now, are descriptive analytics what you're going to spend the majority of your time doing in a data science job? It depends. Probably not. It's not impossible though. It does depend on your job a lot, but one way or the other, they're tremendously useful and you're never going to get away from doing them, at least to some extent. Most simple analytics that you think of will fall under the category of descriptive analytics. So think of things like your mean, your median, sums, totals, percents, percent changes when you're looking retrospectively at historical data. Those are all descriptive analytics. Same thing for all your main graphs. So things like bar charts, histograms, box plots, time charts, the dreaded pie chart, all of those things will fall under the category of descriptive analytics, again, when you're looking in the past. But wait, there's a little more. So maybe you want to compare some response between different groups and you're using confidence intervals or some kind of hypothesis test. That's another example of a descriptive analytic. Maybe you're trying to use an unsupervised learning technique to create clusters in your historical data. That's also a descriptive analytic. And then maybe you have a linear or logistic regression model and you want to infer the effect that a covariate has on your response. Not predict, but just make an inference about an effect. That is yet another example of a descriptive analytic. Which brings me to predictive analytics next. Now, this is a branch of analytics which provides insight into what will happen into the future, compared and contrasted with descriptive analytics which provided insight into the past. Now, it's important to point out, human beings will naturally take indications from and make inferences about the future based on what happened in the past. Now, that's complete human nature, but that doesn't make a descriptive analytic a predictive analytic. A predictive analytic is something which is specifically formulated for predicting what is going to happen in the future. So think of things like forecasting models or classification or regression models where the goal is explicitly prediction rather than inference, and they're applied and they're used with that end goal in mind. Let's think about linear or logistic regression. So in these instances, maybe we know some covariates or some information about a subject set, but we don't know some response. Well, these regression techniques can be applied to predict that response. That's where predictive analytics shows up most often in statistical methods, but there's also newer branches in spatial forecasting models right now, and then maybe you have time series data, and then you can use ARIMA, that is Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average, or other variants on it, to create a forecast. Now, if you're looking into machine learning, most supervised learning or deep learning methods are going to fall under the category of predictive analytics as well. Now keep in mind, it's not impossible to make a simpler forecasting or prediction model. In fact, if you want to make some assumptions and come up with some type of business rules and create a forecast based on those, that's totally fair game and it falls under the umbrella of a predictive analytic. 
However, the models I described before, they are some of the most common types of predictive analytics because they're standard ways of using all available information and explaining variation in the system. And similarly, you have more complicated variations on predictive analytics as well. So take things like weather or climate models. All of these things simulate various factors in the environment and interactions between these factors. And that information is used to create some type of forecast, but that's well above and beyond what most people in data science are going to do as far as predictive analytics is concerned. Last but certainly not least is prescriptive analytics. Now this is the holy grail of analytics. This is definitely the rarest branch of analytics, but it definitely has potential to be the most powerful because it explicitly tells an end user what they should do. And generally how this will work is by generating outcomes from a variety of different scenarios, controlling for risk, controlling for unknowns and uncertainty, and then telling the user what the best scenario is. And like predictive analytics, it's very easy to look at a descriptive analytic and then get some idea of what you should do, but that doesn't make the descriptive analytic prescriptive by definition. There are fewer examples of prescriptive analytics compared to descriptive or predictive, just because they are the rarest form of analytic. Probably the most common form of prescriptive analytic is a mathematical optimization model. So in one of these, you're typically gonna have some kind of outcome, some features, some constraints, and then you can put those together into an objective function. Then that objective function can be used to compare different combinations, different features, different decisions, whatever it may be, those comparisons can be made and then a best option is selected. Simulation models are also pretty common, especially in industries like finance or in healthcare or anything with a supply chain environment. Probably the most common type of simulation is what's called a Monte Carlo simulation. This is where you use repeated random sampling to essentially control for unknown stochastic outcomes. So in doing this, you're controlling for volatility and you're controlling for risk. There's also what's called discrete event simulations, and these serve to model real life processes, as well as the interaction between different actions or different events, and these can be very powerful prescriptive analytics as well. Now once again, with prescriptive analytics, just like with predictive, you can come up with business rules, you can fit statistical distributions for unknown effects, and then you can create a simpler type of prescriptive analytic. These are probably going to carry with them a huge amount of assumptions, but you can do this because for a lot of people, you're just going to lack the know-how or the time to create really advanced simulation or optimization models, which could take weeks or even months to produce. So these terms are usually thought of together in a pipeline, and it's pretty easy to understand why. You can't really make a prediction about the future unless you understand what happened in the past and have some kind of idea about why it happened. Similarly, you can't really tell somebody what they should do unless you have some kind of idea or best guess about what will happen in the future. However, this is not always a linear path. You're not always gonna go from descriptive right to predictive after you're done. Then after you do that, you go to prescriptive. It's often a lot more cyclical and interwoven and connected than that. You may do a little bit of descriptive, then you do a predictive model, you find some new things, go back to descriptive, maybe decide that you wanna delve into prescriptive, go back to descriptive and predictive after that, so on and so forth. So in practice, it probably looks a lot more like a cycle rather than a straight pipeline. So thanks for watching this video. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Until next time, Richard on Data.